Hi guys, Tejas from Breaking Code. This is my new series, Think Serverless, and the problem for the day is Instagram Snapchat Stories. So the problem statement is we need to create a scalable system which would support the feature of Instagram and Snapchat Stories. The system needs to be highly available and scalable. So this is a very broad problem and the two major things that we are going to focus on in this video is content delivery and the 24 hour expiry. So content delivery is basically how we load the timeline and 24 hour expiry is we need to expire the stories in 24 hours. So let's jump right into the approach. So in timeline generation, we are going to look at two approaches. One is pull based and one is push based. So firstly, let's look at pull based approach. So the this is the most basic approach. So whenever a user opens his Instagram and asks for his timeline, so what we do is go hit the database and get his following list and and we go and fetch the recent post from all his following list and uh, display the same to the user. This is again a very uh, time consuming approach because whenever the user starts his Instagram and asks for timeline at that time we are going and fetching all the posts. So this definitely can be improved. So again how to improve this we will uh, add a service which will pre-generate his timeline, preload his timeline uh, before the user even opens Instagram. So what we are going to do is same the pull based approach, it is still the pull based approach. So this service, it will hit all the followings of this particular user and will pre-generate a timeline for him way before he even opens his Instagram. So he again goes to all his followers and uh, fetches the recent post and put the recent post in a queue and whenever the user opens his Instagram, he uh, we just need to fetch this queue for it. This is a good approach again, but one catch here is we need to note that systems like Instagram, Facebook are mostly read heavy systems and not write heavy systems. So people load their timelines a lot of times, but they hardly post something, uh, not very frequently. So these calls that we make to pull the recent post, usually these calls will return empty responses. And uh, again, these these calls that we make are again a waste of time. So we can optimize the system uh, by taking in mind that this is a read heavy system and not a write heavy system. So that's why we jump into the push based approach. So in the pull based approach again, uh, what the user's responsibility was to go and pull the timeline every time uh, from each of his following list. So in push based approach, he, uh, the user's responsibility is go and push the post into other people's timeline. So in the earlier case, we were pulling the post here. We are pushing our post. So whenever a user posts a story, a uh, media or image or anything, what he'll do is his responsibility is to go and push that particular post into all his followers list. And uh, so this way, whenever user, this user loads his timeline, all he has to do is just fetch the recent post from his timeline, this queue, timeline queue. So this is how the push base approach works. So in this case, we only make the calls whenever the user is posting something. So we are saving on a lot of the calls, uh, which we saw in the previous case. So this is actually a good approach, the push based approach. Uh, but again, there is a catch here. So if there is a celebrity user, so if suppose Eminem posts something, uh, he has 25 million followers. So all Eminem will have to do is whenever he posts something, he'll have to go to 25 million people and post that particular post into their timeline queues. So which is definitely not a good way and this will take forever. So what we have to go for is a hybrid approach, which will be including both the things. One is pull based and push based. So this is the final approach that we'll agree upon. So anytime a user opens his Instagram, we have two things that we need to fetch posts from. One is celebrity users and one is the regular users. So whenever a regular user posts something, his responsibility is to go and uh, put his post into my timeline and uh, if a, a celebrity user has more than a particular number of followers then what i'll do is go and fetch all my celebrity users and fetch the recent post of celebrity users so suppose eminem posted this post even so i'll go and pull this post from eminem's queue and not he'll come and post it in mine so again, this is a hybrid approach here in the upper area. We are using push based approach and for the celebrity section, we are using pull based approach. So this is how the timeline generation works. So I keep mentioning that we need to fetch the post from timeline queue. So what this timeline queue is, 
it doesn't actually have to be a queue it could be as easy as just a entry in a database so this is my username and this could be my timeline queue timeline queue is just a notation that i've used uh, so this is just a row which is a comma separated post ids that we fetch and we load it in our timeline so again if we keep this as the data schema we can also optimize this so whenever we need to add another post so suppose we need to add d1 in my timeline so what we have to do is just do update so update is a very costly op operation if we are using dynamo db so what it does is it actually removes a1 b1 b2 and then again post uh, a1 b1 b2 d1 so again this operation will be removing three post and adding four post so according to ddb costing uh, per kb takes uh, one write unit so this will definitely even if we consider each post uh, as 1 KB. So this will cost us like 7 uh, write units if we follow this approach. So we can definitely simplify this and modify our data schema. So instead of keeping every post ID in a single row, what we'll use is uh, sort key in DynamoDB that we have. And uh, so for every primary key, we can have multiple sort keys and even we can sort uh, based on the sort keys. That's why it's called sort key. And uh, so whenever we need to add another post in front of stages, all we do is add another row itself. So this is not that costly. And as long as we are using the sort key, we can also take another advantage. So instead of just having the post ID, we can add times timestamp in front of it. So we can even sort the post based on timestamp. Whenever a user asks for the latest post, we can uh, give him the actual latest post by sorting this. Uh, this is the post with the highest timestamp so we can load this first and then go to these posts so again we can just uh, modify our dynamodb query and use this functionality so now let's look into the auto expiry so again rather than handling the entire thing on our own and maintaining our own clock we have something called as uh, ttl which is time to live so databases like DynamoDB and Redis, they support time to live. So whenever we add a entry in a database, it can we can pre-configure that we, it will auto expire after 24 hours. And so this entry just gets removed after 24 hours and which is quite uh, good for us. If the, after 24 hours, we need, won't see the post uh, that was mentioned here. So we can keep the TTL uh, as 24 hours or 32 hours. Now, why would we keep 32 hours? Snapchat has it as 32 hours, I think. Uh, so they actually mentioned this thing in uh, a talk about DynamoDB in uh, AWS reInvent. Uh, so what they were facing is they faced an issue uh, regarding the load optimization. So every so they had these kind of graphs. So they used to see a certain spike in number of writes at every midnight. So whenever a midnight ha uh, happens, a lot of posts were getting posted in Snapchat, but also they used to get deleted on the next day in Snapchat uh, at midnight. So if we see according to the costing, write takes uh, a write unit and also delete takes a write unit. So again, delete is just basically a write operation as per the costing. So this will definitely bump up our cost uh, and increase our throughput. So what they did was try to normalize the load and uh, they did the delete after 32 hours instead of 24 hours. So this uh, reduces the actual sum of the throughput that we have. So let's look at the final system. So this is the final system that we developed. So whenever I post something on my Instagram uh, as a story, so the actual image gets uploaded to S3, which is an object store from AWS. And we go to the push service. So the actual URL of the object from S3 will be stored in front of the post ID. And once we have the post ID, as discussed earlier, we'll do the fan out approach and go and post that post ID into all the timeline queues of my followers. So the people who are following me can see that on their timeline. So all of my following list, I get it from the database and uh, so this is how it will look like so if Vineet is my follower all i have to do is uh, just go and push the, my particular post uh, suppose it might be something else so we'll just post it uh, in front of the c1 so that Vineet can see the post so once we have the post posted in all of my following lists uh, timeline uh, so what happens is whenever Vineet loads his instagram uh, he'll just fetch his timeline from the timeline service which will just fetch the timeline queue that we just generated and we'll just add another filter here just if we remember 
in the last uh, slide we configured the TTL as 32 hours and not 24 hours. So this filter will just delete the post from all the timeline queue which are more than 24 hours but less than 32 hours. So if it's more than 32 hours it will just get deleted on its own because of the TTL. But all the posts which are not supposed to be seen by Vinit which are more than 24 hours and less than 32 it will get filtered out by this filter and his timeline gets generated. And as you can see uh, like uh, how the timeline gets generated, he needs to stream the object from S3. We can again use an additional mechanism from S3 which is pre-signed URL. So for every object we can generate a pre-signed URL. And uh, the speciality of pre-signed URL is we can uh, stream and we can add a TTL on URL itself. So after 24 hours the URL will get expired and not the actual object from S3. So if the URL gets expired, any which way the user cannot see uh, the image or whatever my post was. So again, this is like an additional layer of security that we added so that Vinit doesn't see the post after 24 hours. And uh, as you can see, so the post actually doesn't get deleted from S3. So it's uh, after 24 hours, we need to also delete the post from S3. Uh, again, Instagram doesn't do it. It stores it forever. But if we want to optimize our system, all we have to do is just capture the delete stream from DynamoDB. So once uh, the object hits its time to live, which is 32 hours, it automatically gets deleted. All we need to do is just capture that delete event and just identify the object and delete that from S3. So this stream will just uh, indicate that the object has been in the database for 32 hours and it won't be seen by any of the users and so we can remove that object from S3. So this is basically one of the main advantages of using serverless systems. So we used a lot of AWS serverless services. So th definitely we can use things like the delete stream from DynamoDB and even the pre-signed URL from S3. So these things are pretty useful if we use the services that are offered to us by cloud which are more mature than what we can build it on our own. And this system is definitely not the most perfect system that we can make but, but the points that we touched upon was how the content gets delivered through a fan out approach which is push based approach and how we can handle the 24 hour expiry is by using the system such as DynamoDB and Redis and using the TTL feature. Uh, I think this is it for the video. I hope you learned something and uh, see you guys in the next one. Bye.